what do I want to be doing when I'm 72? Uh, traveling through France and Italy. I just hope I'm around when I'm 72. <laughs> I'll tell you, at 72, I hope I'm breathing and playing golf somewhere. All right, here we go. Offense, up and back. Defense, up and back. This is what Marv Levy is doing at 72. And only George Hallis, who owned the Chicago Bears, was a head coach in the NFL at that age. But Levy has no intention of leaving the sideline anytime soon. When you and Franny retire, you know you always got a place to come down. And, well, that's yeah. nice. And you won't retire for That's enough thinking about it, yeah. Get <laughs> a break, get some water, we'll go nine on seven down here. Mentally, Levy is as sharp and witty as ever. Stayed up well past midnight making that decision. <laughs> Physically, he does his best to beat Father Time. And he faces the problems of growing old with a self-deprecating sense of humor. Very deep. Okay, thanks. Thanks. I got what he's Thank you. What do you think? I can't hear? What? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> now, you were going to be a lawyer, right, Marv? You Correct. Were. Now, what changed your mind? I entered law school, entered Harvard Law School in the fall of 1950, stayed about three weeks and said to myself, I want to be a coach. So I transferred over to the graduate school instead, got my master's degree, and the next year I began coaching as an assistant coach in high school. Yeah. Eight jobs okay. and 20 years later, Levy was an assistant under George Allen. Damn, this is, this is the type of stuff, see? The more you can break it down, Marv, you know it, because you had to coach this, see? His first professional head coaching job came in Canada in 1973. In five seasons, he led the Montreal Alouettes to two Grey Cup championships. Finally, in 1978, he became an NFL head coach, but he inherited a team that had won just two games the previous season. Under Levy's tutelage, the Chiefs improved their record for four straight seasons, and they learned the never-say-die attitude that would become the hallmark of their coach. Whatever we do right or wrong, Bobby, I believe our guys are going to give one hell of an effort. We can sweep and we can run at them. We can run at them, we can sweep them. Levy ran at opponents with an old-fashioned conservative wing T offense. Only a decade later, he would revolutionize the game with a frenetic no-huddle offense. Hurry it up, hurry it up, hurry it up, hurry. You better hurry. But Levy has always devised clever ways to move the football. What we gotta run, I'm telling you, it sounds crazy, is an 888. Deep down the middle, I hope we get a pass interference, don't you think? Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. Levy's strategies have changed often through the years because, as he says, If you don't change with the times, the times are going to change you for another coach. But one aspect of his coaching has remained a constant, his relationship with officials. Would you consider yourself really tough on officials? Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of a call is that? I think I am. I keep telling myself, control it. I'm not proud of it. That's the most chicken call I've ever seen. That is the most chicken call I've ever seen, Tony. Who threw that flag, you know? Our field judge. Who? Our field judge. He's an idiot, the guy. He keeps doing it all the time. Do you know any of the officials personally? Went to college with that official. Yes, <laughs> I, went to, I did. I went to college with him, huh? You blind bat! That's not interference! All you are is a big official now. You got to... Big official! Hey, you over-officious jerk! Did he ever see that? Did you th that clip that we use all the time? I'm sure he. I'm sure did he. Did he ever call you up and say, "Hey, Marv, what were you? Why did you call me?" That? <laughs> well, that's not the worst I've called him. I guess <laughs> I knew I was Mike that day. <laughs> All right, let's go, guys. We're gonna knock their ass off. Marv Levy's Buffalo Bills have always played like warriors, and that's very fitting because they've heard countless war stories from their leader. He's got a great ability to relate history and the lessons of history to today's players, and uh, that, that's frequently the topic of, uh, of his talks to the team, and they joke about it, but they remember. The good one that I remember, we were 
in the middle of the Super Bowl run. I, I think it was either the first Super Bowl or second Super Bowl, and we were going on a stretch run of three road games. And uh, Marv comes in, and he gave us, he starts talking, and everybody started looking around. He says, in 1939, Hitler was in charge of the greatest war machine ever, in, ever put together. It was better run, better led, better equipped, behind, with a whole nation behind it. Then I went on to say how they invaded Russia, but um, uh, the, finally their, their efforts to conquer the world fell apart uh, in Russia, in the cold winter in the steppes of Russia. And I said, there's a moral to that story, and you know what it is? Do you know why Hitler lost? Look, they perplexed it. Because Hitler couldn't win on the road. Everybody's like, what, what the hell is he talking about, you know? <laughs> We're going to play a football game here, and he's talking about uh, World War One and Two, and how, I don't know, he just goes on and on, but players don't realize what he's talking about until they go back to the room, and all of a sudden you might be like, oh yeah, I know, now I get it, now I get it. He's so intelligent. His choice of words are so carefully put, uh, it, it leaves a lasting impression on you. Guys. I've said this four years in a row, but this year, we're not only going back to the big one, we're going to win it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one is leaving this room until we figure out how. No one. The Bills can joke about their four consecutive Super Bowl losses now, but perhaps the most heartbreaking was the first, when a last second field goal attempt just missed. Levy found a unique way to deal with the pain. On the plane, going back, I recalled a poem which is in a slim volume of English poetry that my mother had given to me way back when I joined the Army Air Corps during World War II. It was by an unknown British uh, poet in the 15th century about a Scottish warrior. Fight on, my men, Sir Andrew said. A little I'm hurt, but not yet slain. I'll just lie down and bleed a while, and then I'll rise and fight again. Well, the next day, when the players came in for the team meeting, I'd had that typed up and blown up and posted on the bulletin board and didn't say much more than that. Uh, after the meeting, about eight or ten of our players uh, asked me if they could get a copy of it. And uh, three or four times since then, uh, whenever we've had a particularly discouraging moment uh, or a game that we uh, felt very badly about uh, losing somebody, I don't know who, has put that poem back up on the board. They say that there are certain lessons that can be learned in defeat. Do, do you think that's true? Well, yes, but uh, you don't want to learn them too often. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said that failure is just an opportunity to start again more intelligently. And um, I, I think that is the truth. When you look back on your career, Marv, what is the part of your career or is there one accomplishment that you feel most proud of right now? Our ability here to come back, to come back from disappointments. Way to come back, guys, way to hang in there. To read in the faces of players their resolve and their resilience. Everybody waiting for us to fall? We may fall a little bit every now and then, but we always know one thing, we're gonna get right back up. You can overcome, baby. You can overcome this. The Bills' resilience led them to the greatest comeback in NFL history, rallying from 32 points down to beat Houston. And it was that same resilience that led Marv Levy to a victory over cancer in 1995. He's got a great perspective. He's got a great perspective, not in the game of football, but really in the game of life. And I think that uh, you know a lot of us probably need to sit back and look at a guy like Marv Levy, and you know, and recognize that uh, maybe some of the problems we all have aren't as, aren't so bad. And when you look at a guy who's able to endure like he's done, um, you know, you can do it with great respect. He is so modest that Bill's administrators secretly had to put his picture on the cover of the 1996 media guide because they knew he would have disapproved. He is so loved that a player once asked for a Marv clause in his contract, a guarantee that Levy would be coach for the length of the deal. All right, all right, all right! And he so loves the game. Great day for football! That every football Sunday for nearly 40 years, he has delivered the same heartfelt speech. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now?